So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to use and create a GraphQL API and store the items in AI table. We will explore some tools to build your query so you can build any application that requires you to interface with a GraphQL API. We will be using Product Hunt as an example. We will explore their documentation and come up with strategies on how we are going to tackle this workflow and I will show you how to authenticate via their REST API. We will then take the access token and use it to query their products using their GraphQL API. After having the products, we will go through each one and add it to the AI table to store the products. So I'm going to show you quite a bit of things today. Hopefully that you can apply to your own automation or application. So please sit back and relax and enjoy the video. By the way, if you're new here, my name is Dennis and I'm a principal software engineer. I make videos on coding, automation, and AI every week. And if you'd like to join me and support this channel, go ahead and subscribe and please like this video. So let's get started. So I created a small diagram here that demonstrates the flow and what we're going to be building. So we're going to add a schedule based trigger. We then we're going to be setting it to run once a day, runs at midnight. We're going to do a HTTP call to get the access token for product hunt. We're going to make a simple HTTP call and authenticate and get a access token. We're going to use that access token to pass in and authenticate uh, to their GraphQL API. I'm going to show you guys how to use GraphQL to construct those queries and have some tools available so you can easily create some queries based on the uh, GraphQL schema that they provided. So once we have all the different products that we have, we can loop through the products. And for each pass, we're going to filter the AI table. So I created an AI table for this demonstration so that we can insert the records in AI table for keeping track of the products. We don't want to duplicate the records. So we're going to filter the AI table by ID. We're using the ID by product hunt. That's what we're going to be using to identify each record. And we're going to check if the product exists. And if it doesn't, we're going to add a record to a table data sheet. All right, let's check out Product Hunt's website. This is what I'm going to be using for this demonstration. If you're not familiar with Product Hunt, it's essentially a platform that showcases and promotes new products for services and startups. So it is a community-driven website where people can discover, discuss, and share the latest technologies, products, and websites. In innovation, you can even vote on a product. So we're interested in their API. So if you want to go find their API, go search for product hunt API. So their newest API is 2.0, which they're using GraphQL for their API implementation. So they have some links to GraphQL and how to use GraphQL on this side of the page. And they also are providing some endpoints here on how to query their products. There's also some documentation on how to get started on OAuth. So we're gonna explore the two options. The first option is the user authentication flow. And the second is the client only authentication. So the major difference between the two is if you're trying to authenticate to a website and they require additional de details, if you're using Google or Facebook, where they want to be able to use some other personal information from their particular website. So you can dictate which type of information you want to provide to them. So that's kind of the main flow of the authentication. And the user authentication usually requires you to do a redirect. So if you go to this user authentication page, it's going to require you to enter your URI. So it's going to give you a redirect URI where the user is going to be directed to, and it's going to be prompting them to give them the permission to access certain information. And from there, it gives you a authorization code. All right, so once we get the authorization code, you can make another request to get the access token. So that's the flow for user authentication. If you just care about just trying to authenticate a user, a more simpler approach is to go with the client-only authentication, which only requires you to provide the client ID and client secret and the grant type of client credentials. So I'm gonna show you guys how to get the, the client ID and the client secret. So if you wanna get the client ID and client secret, you're gonna go and sign up via the api.productconnect website and then you can add an application. So from here, I added a application that I've named Active Pieces. I also provided the redirect UI, which is required to be able to create a user authentication if I choose to, to go with that approach. In this case, I'm not gonna be using that. They provide me an API key, which is the client ID, and then the secret, which is the client secret. So that's that for Product Hunt. 
So one tool that I've been using quite a bit lately is this tool by Apollo Graph QL. They have a studio a sandbox explorer where you can explore the actual schema for a GraphQL API and you can poke around and look at their documentation and inspect what the schema looks like. You can explore the documentation, navigate, and it'll give you this interface where you can see the documentation on the left, the actual query on the middle, and the response on the right. You can even pass in the variables on the bottom of the screen. So it's a nice way to be able to play around with the GraphQL API and navigate and be able to construct the actual query. So for instance, I'm constructing a post here where I'm passing in the featured, which is added to variable on the actual post. And then it's adding in the different fields that I have. So I can basically just toggle these different fields and it will automatically just change or alter the query based on what I've selected on the left side. So if I want to include the ID, I can select that. If I want to include the uh, is collected field, I can go ahead and include it as well. So I can remove it. I can navigate to the product links, which includes a product link type. I can select that and it automatically just remove the whole node out of that selection. So it's a very convenient way of being able to navigate and construct the query without having to know exactly what type of field or what type of argument is available to you. I can execute it. It's quite simple. All right, so if I want to pass in the actual authentication, the bear token, I can click on the connection settings on the top by clicking on it. So there's the URL. So you can put in the URL right here. And then next to it will be the connection settings. I can add in the endpoint and the subscription and it will auto detect it. And if I want to pass in some headers as part of this request, I can put that. So in this case, I added authorization with a bearer token, which I've gotten from the previous call when I make an OAuth request. And I can add additional shared headers if I want as well. So I can save it. So whenever you execute this command or query, it's going to go and take a look at all the variables and the different operations that have in place to make this query work. So that's how this tool works. And that's another tool that I've been experimenting lately is just called Alter Graph Q, which allows you to download an application on your desktop and be able to debug your GraphQL API that way. So it kind of looks like this and I want to bring it up so you can kind of see how it looks like. You specify the URL on the tab, similar to Postman, you can add a new tab and specify the URL on the top. And then if you want to set the headers, let's say you need to authenticate. So you can specify the different headers. Now you can pass in the authentication or access token on the headers. And it creates and gives you the documentation for that particular GraphQL endpoint. So you can reload the documentation and it gives you this documentation type of window where you can explore. So you have your result in the middle and your query on the left hand side and then the documentation on the right hand side. So you can explore here the different queries. For instance, there's some collections. So you can add that to your query as well. So let's say, for instance, I want to add the post. I want to add that query. It's going to add pretty much everything. So we don't want to do that. So we're going to explore a little bit more. Let's say I want to include the post. So we can drill down to the post. It will give you the arguments. For post, we have an argument. You can do the order. From the post order, it gives you the different options that you have such as the featured ads, votes, ranking, and newest. You can order your post based on those particular values. Next to the arguments, you can see the different fields that's been provided. So we can see the different nodes. So let's say you want to explore the nodes. You can click that. Within each node, you can see that there's the actual ID, the different fields that's associated with this particular node. So that's pretty much how you can construct your query. And just about understanding the schema that's been provided, you can inspect the documentation. So before we get started on the actual automation, I just wanna kind of give you a little bit of a recap and understanding of what the data sheet looks like on the AI table side. So I added this new data sheet called product hunt, which consists of an ID as a number, which we're gonna be populating using the product hunts ID. We're gonna be adding the URL, the name, the tagline and the date added is going to be a date which is just going to be automatically populated date when we add the record to this data sheet and the tagline is pretty much a single line text 
the name is single line text and the URL of URL type of field. So that's pretty much the makeup of this particular data sheet. Okay, okay. jump into active pieces this is probably the most into the part of this video and what you've been waiting for this whole time is I added a new flow, which I added a schedule type of trigger. I'm selecting every day as the, the trigger and the hour of the day is going to be midnight and I'm selecting my time zone, here, which is Pacific Los Angeles. The next step is to add the HTTP code, which we're going to be finding on the core. So we're going to go and navigate to that. Based on our documentation, we're going to be doing a HTTP method, which we're then going to be pointing to this URL. All right. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to paste the actual body of the request. They're requiring a few things such as the grant type. We're going to also going to require the client ID and the client secret. So once you've provided the grant type of, of client credentials, you're going to have to provide the client ID and client secret. So you have to go and go back to Product Hunt's API and create an account with them and then generate an application and then they'll give you the client ID and client secret. Once you have that in place, you can test this step. And it's going to give you an access token on the body of the response, which then you're going to be using to query their GraphQL API. Okay, so we're going to add a code, which is pretty much like the meat of this implementation. We're going to add a code piece. And from here, we're going to be passing in the actual access token. So we're going to specify a parameter or input that we're going to be using. From here, we're going to be passing in the access token, which we're going to be grabbing from the previous step, which is from the uh, send HTTP request. We're going to grab from the body, which we're then going to insert right here. So now we have the access token. So we're going to write the code. I'm going to go ahead and, and go to full screen and expand this. I'm going to add a package. I'm going to be using Axio to make an HTTP request. Okay, once that's ready, we'll proceed with the code. The first thing I want to do is actually create a function that will be using this particular query. So it's going to be quite simple. So it's going to be one function that I'm going to be using. I'm going to explain you how it works. I created an asynchronous function that, that I named query product hunt API and receives an access token. So we're going to be calling this and going to be referencing Axios to make a post request for this URL, which is api.producthunt.com forward slash v2 forward slash API and GraphQL. And then from here, the second parameter. So it's going to take in the actual query and the variables for this particular one. I include the variables just for reference. So let's say if you're, you're passing in an argument here, let's say you want to pass in a, a keyword, for instance, you can pass that here. Let's say I want to do a keyword, then you can reference that in your actual query down below. So we're not, since we're not doing variable, we're just going to keep that as blank. But the query here is the most important piece of this puzzle. You have to specify type of implementation, whether if you're using mutation or query. And the next part is the actual uh, name of the method. This is actually optional, so you don't have to specify this one. And is this going to work? So you're going to grab the post and we're going to pass in the argument. I think the API only provides 20 maximum posts uh, as a part of results. So we're going to just specify 20. And inside for each post, we're going to want to drill down to the edges, to the node, and watch particular data or fields we want to include as part of that query. So in this case, we're going to be including the ID, the name, the URL, and tagline. So the only things that we're interested in this GraphQL API. And the second argument that we're going to be using as part of the, the post request is the headers. So we're going to be passing in the headers object, which will contain the authorization key, which will include the bearer and then the access token. And then once you make this request, you're going to await it and it's going to put the results in this response. Yeah, so once we get the result, we're going to navigate to that result and only extract the actual post, right? Instead of having to navigate through all that different objects within the results.data, we're just going to map it and return the edge.node, which we're then, when we execute this code, it's going to give us this array. This is a nicer, clean data that we can use for our application. So it gives us the ID, the name, the URL, and the actual tagline, and we're going to get that array. So we can minimize this. Once you test the code on the full screen, you'll have to do a, another test here, or you can proceed to the next part of this flow. So then we proceed and, and go to this code and go through the products. So the next step is to add a loop, which we're then we're going to be specifying that we want to take in 
the actual array. So you can see here, there's multiple result that's being returned from that code. But we're just going to share the actual array instead of having to specify a single item from that array. So we're going to put the whole array in this loop and then we test this. So for every loop, you get an index and now she'll get an item. So it's going to give you an, a, a preview of what type of item you receive for each iteration. Or, and then from here, we can go add the AI table as the next step. So from here, I want to be able to first find a record. So before I do any insertion of the actual product, I want to make sure that my record is unique and I'm not just inserting a, an existing product that's already in there. So before I insert any new records, I want to check that record first doesn't exist. So I want to go ahead and select my space and choose product hunt. I'm just going to leave the record IDs as I don't want to filter by record IDs. I want to be able to filter based on my own field. So the field name, if you want to specify the field names, you can specify that here. I'm not going to do that as I want all the, I just want all the fields to be returned. So the, the main thing that I want to use here is the actual filter field here, which I can specify. Okay. okay, so if we're going to go back to the the AI tables data sheet, you can see I have an ID a column or field, which I'm going to be using to filter out and make sure that I have a unique ID for this data sheet. So one way to do that is to check if I already have that record by checking based on this ID. So I can do that by passing in the ID and doing an equals and I'm going to double check and I'm going to check based on the the loop on items and I'm going to grab the item and I'm going to grab the actual ID. I want to filter based on this particular ID and so I want to do an ID equals to ID. Okay. And then I can do a test. This total is zero. That means there's no records that exist yet for this particular ID. So I can add this. And the next step would be to add an actual check or branch whether this data contains some records. So I can do that by adding a branch. And the, the main thing I want to do here is to filter by the total. So I can go to number five, go to the data, and I'm interested in the total. I want to make sure that the number is greater than zero. So this validates whether the product exists in a table. So I'm going to name this. So this will return a true or false type of response where if the number in the data total field is greater than zero, that means it's true, which then I'm, I can skip that logic and not insert it. If it's false, then I can add a record to the AI table. All right, so in this case, we're gonna add a new piece, which is AI table. This is quite simple. We're gonna add, create a record, and we're gonna be specifying the space, and then we're gonna be specifying the, the actual data sheet, and then it's gonna load the actual record we're going to be passing in the actual within that loop. So we're going to go and pass the ID for the URL. We're going to pass in the URL. The name is the actual, the product name and the tagline, which also exists as part of that loop item. Okay. And then we can test that code and then we can go back to a table. There's a new record that came up. It says letterly and turn your speech into well-written text. Date added here, which is automatically added for us. Okay, once you've completed the whole flow, now uh, you can and hit test on the top and it will test the whole flow from start to finish. You flip and back to AI table and see the records comes in as the flow is being run simultaneously in the background. The products are being added right now. So it's locating is going through and looping through each records that it found through the query and it's just adding it to AI table. So that wraps it up for this video. If there's anything that you would like to see in the future, from my channel please leave it in the comment as always please subscribe to my channel and i'll see you in the next video bye